folks, Travis Elston here, Elston Equine Solutions, and today we're going to talk about is these things right here. Now these go by multiple different names and titles. Some people call them a morale bag, some people call them a feast bag, and other people know them as a nose bag. And I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of utilizing this type of feed equipment. Uh, some of the pros. Well, one thing I like about them is... Uh, you put grain in here, you don't lose no grain, okay? Simply, you put grain inside the nose bag, and it's hard for a horse or a mule to lose the feed, okay? If you look down at a normal feed pan that I got demonstrated right here, even though people put rocks inside the way down the feed pan, a lot of aggressive horses are pawing, they'll still knock over the pan, and now you got grain all over the ground, and then you possibly pick up sand colic. Now, this does work as good technique a good trick for the horses that are non-aggressive okay put rocks on there and the whole idea is they got to eat around it slows their feed habit down because they got to pick around the rocks to be able to eat the grain okay and the second part is once again to weigh down the feed pan so this is uh you know one way to do it but you're going to lose grain essentially so with this you're not going to okay it's hard to tip over they're not going to be able to do it do it so that's one of the the pros of this another pro uh tip for using this is if you mix a medication inside you can put it inside this and it's individually designed for that horse if you got a lot of these feed pans around you're trying to medicate the horse you know and you don't got so many pens to separate your animals it's hard to keep the horses separate from rotating from one pan scaring off another horse eating that medication so that's another handy reason why to use these uh Another key point, which is a pro to this, is if I put a nose bag on every horse, they can't fight. Just like example, I gave you, they can't chase off these feed pan, chase another horse off that one, going down the pecking order of the horses once they're done eating it. Because you always got that one special horse that's very round, because he likes to steal other horses' grub, okay? This prevents that, so that's one of the pros. Some of the cons of using the nose bag is that they wear out a little bit faster than a normal feed pan okay uh second thing is you gotta stick around and monitor a horse eating the nose band to make sure they don't get in no trouble the third thing is the con is you have to wait and stick around wait for them to get done and then remove the nose bag off of the animal so those are some of the cons but the biggest benefits for these and i love using them i use them out in the high country the back country uh because i can contain what i want for that animal Another specific pro about the feed bag is, or the nose bag here, is every horse has different weight. So if I measure the weight of grain that I need for that horse, I can put it inside this, and I know scientifically and specifically that horse is getting the supplements it needs and the grain it needs. So those are some of the pros and the cons of using the nose bags. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to demonstrate with the horse being tied up what I do and what method I use to be able to put a feed bag on the horse. All right, folks, if you're trying to catch a horse, this is another nice thing. If I have grain inside a feed sack or a nose bag or a morel bag or whatever you want to label this thing, they get used to seeing these things, they hear it, they're going to come running. Okay, I guarantee you that. So that's one thing nice and handy about this. So what I'm going to demonstrate now, I got grain inside my nose bag here. And what I like to do first is I got all these different holes inside the webbing here. I like to set my buck on the very last hole and not way up here. That way, if I come up to the horse, I can easily slip it onto the horse. And I like to set it off to the side before I go up to the animal. And when I go up to my horse, if they're sleeping, I'll call the horse's name and say, Hey, Gunner, in case you're sleeping, I don't spook my horse. Okay, clearly he's alert. 
Now I have this horse tied up hard and fast, okay? He's uh, tied up real close to the trailer. I'm gonna undo it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie it a little bit looser so he can actually reach the ground with his head, just like that. And then I'm gonna tie the horse back up. The reason I do that is because when they put the nose bag on, they're gonna to have to lower their head to be able to push all the grain up on the bottom edge of the bag, the bag to be able to eat it. So that's why I lengthen this. Notice I'm not going between the trailer and the horse tie there because I don't want to get spooked, run into me and squish me in between the trailer. So I went around. So now I grab my nose bag. Remember once again, I've already lengthened in the buckle all the way up. I'm going to come to my horse. And it's a real simple process. They're going to stick the nose in there. And they're just going to go to the outside ear. To the inside ear. And it doesn't matter which side you go on. I'm just gonna put the nose bag on. Now I'm just gonna tighten it up so I'm gonna walk around the other side of the horse. You can hear he's eating at it already. He's hitting the ground, it's no baby, but now I'm gonna help him out by adjusting it. And you can see this one's made out of canvas. It has little holes inside here so the horse can breathe. And another thing is nice, if he accidentally dips his uh, nose bag here into some water, the water will rush out of there so he doesn't drown, okay? And you'll see he's just enjoying it. It's pretty self-explanatory for the horse. They're naturally just going to go after it. I've never really seen a horse really scared with the use of a nose bag. Real easy pleasy. All right, folks, once I think that the horse is gone and ate and all the grain, what I'll do is push up on the bag to make sure that he's got all the last stuff out, which he does. And then I'll just simply unbuckle the whole nose bag and slide it off. And you can see inside there's no grain. They don't miss a drop, okay? Doesn't spill out the containers, none on the ground, there's none on the the barn floor, whatever you're at, at your feeding station. And then once he's done eating, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten the rope back up because what you don't need them is pawing and then getting their leg caught over the lead rope. That's just bad juju. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. We're just gonna tie the horse back up. And then he's good to go. Okay. Now let's talk about something else here real quick. We've already talked about, I'm gonna talk about something else real quick. Another good thing is if I'm about ready to saddle a horse and I got the horse tied up, a lot of times I will already bring them in off the nose bag. They'll come in and run and I'll put the nose bag on, I'll tie the horse up and then I can do my saddling on the horse, okay? They're not busy uh, moving around, they're not busy hitting me, they're not busy paying attention to me when I'm putting on a saddle because they are preoccupied with the nose bag, okay? So if you got that horse that doesn't like to be saddled or they're trying to reach back and try to nip you, sometimes you can keep their mind busy and occupied with food while you're doing saddling. So that's a good tip too. All right, folks, what I'm gonna demonstrate here is if I'm gonna feed the horses loose, I'm just gonna put a feed bag on. And you'll see that they don't really fight. They're just waiting their turn, nice and easy like. And this prevents them from chasing each other off if you're using the feed bowl or a ground feeder. See, there's no fighting. This horse is waiting patiently. And like I said before, if I got different weights for different grain for different horses, and I don't want to don't have enough corrals, I got the proper amount of feed for each horse. If I need to just put medication just for this horse, I got medication inside this nose bag. 
So it's a great tool. It's been around for eons. You know, the Calvary used to use them back today. The and I've showed you uh, the different types of nose bags here. This one's made out of canvas. Some are made out of nylon. Same are made out of mesh. A lot of people like mesh because you visually see the grain where they're at. If it's empty or not, the canvas is a little bit harder. So you got to come up and feel if they're done or not. Okay. And the biggest safety thing is, is make sure you stick around until they're done eating. And then you got to be around to be able to remove them. But it's pretty handy. You can go do your chores, you know, come back, but make sure you watch your animals. And they really enjoy these. Hello folks, Travis from Elston Equine Solutions. And today's what we're going to be talking about is uh, Feeding horses out in the back country. Today, as you can see, you got horses, uh, mule picked it out. We're in the back country, the Tetons, and actually, more specifically, the Gross Bond Wilderness. Uh, out here, we've got grain, and we have a couple, of, keep calling them feed bags, mor moral bags, nose bags. They come by different topics, and this is just one kind. See inside, it just puts a grain to feed on. And what I like about these canvas ones or nylon ones, I try to get the kind they have air holes in there. And that's for a couple reasons. One, when the horse got their muzzle down inside here to eat, they can breathe, for one. Two, if they're next to a stream, they're not drowning, the water could spurt out, okay? So this is one kind, made out of canvas or nylon. This one's nylon specific. And the second kind is really neat, is you got a mesh bag style. Now this one's built a little bit different than the Buckapel style. This one here, you got two straps. You got one that goes above the ears where my left hand is, and you got one that goes around the neck where my right hand is. And you'll see how we do this, how we feed our horses. Uh, it's pretty simple. I like the mesh because you can see how much grain they got. And plus, same thing, if they go next to a creek, kind of wander in there, they're not going to drown themselves. And you don't have to worry about a dust problem either. This is probably one of the better bags to use out there. So we're going to demonstrate that next, so please follow me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, I have this bag. There ain't much training to this. You can see, you just have them stick the nose down in there. Normally I come up here with the strap loosened out as much as I can. I go to the outside here, and then to the inside here, push it forward and slide the nose bag on. And you can see they go right at it. And then we'll show you when they, the feed starts going down, 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 they actually stick their nose in the bag down onto the ground and they'll push on it and it pushes the bag back up where they get to the grain. Real neat system, it's away from the eyeballs, nice and easy pleasy. Can't get no easier than that. Hello folks, what we're gonna do is put on uh, this uh, feed bag here real quick and we're gonna put on uh, this mule. Generally what I like to do is put on the head first, hang it onto the rear neck strap, and I'll tighten the head down until it's snug. And then I go to the back neck strap, reach over top of the head, and I just buckle it down. And then what I like to do, make sure you no twist. And then I just tighten it up. And you'll see that this type of a bag is feeds initially up here and because it's on the neck gravity pushes it forward and right down into the nose of the bag so it's a pretty cool little mesh nose bag to feed these animals this livestock and then we'll tie it up just a tad bit more and there we go now these feed bags you can get out of different outfitters supply stores uh, specifically Montana, Wyoming, Washington, Oregon, where everybody goes to the back country. You just got to Google one and look them up. It doesn't matter if it's Montana Outfitters or any place like that, and they'll have these type of bags. And you can see it's real easy pleasy. At home, a lot of times, instead of wasting feed over uh, buckets on the ground that they kick over, I'll put the nose bags on, and that helps a lot. Plus, it trains the, the horse or the mule to get used to them and accept them. So when you're back here in the outcup, uh, the back country, in the high country like I am today, it's easy pleasy. It's a piece of cake.
folks, we're going to show next is uh, how to take a nose bag and morale bag off of a horse. Basically, what I like to do is check to make sure if I can't see if you got grain in there or not. I'll just push up on the nose and let them find the leftover grain. So I'm just pushing up on the bog, bomb of the bag, and they're just kind of nibbling any leftover grain that might be in there. Then once they stop uh, munching and moving around, I just kind of loosen the bag just a little bit. Have them drop their head, and then they just take it right off. Easy pleasy. And if you look inside the bag, voila, they done finished that gourmet meal. <laughs> no complaints, say no complaints here. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. These type of bags, what I like to do is I like to reverse where I put on. I take the neck strap off first, unbuckle it. Come to the front, you can either unbuckle it or you can move it off the side of the off the ears. In this case, it's so easy. I just unstrap it. Easy pleasy, nothing left because you can see if there's grain inside of it or not because it's mesh. That's one of the nice things about this style. And then what I like to do is I just put the straps back on, buckle back up so I'm not tripping on it on the way back to the to the camp there we go now I just got about half a dozen more horses to do easy pleasy easier making flapjacks all right folks I hope you enjoyed this episode please hit like to my channel I definitely appreciate tuning in whatever you're doing out there in the world I uh, appreciate whatever you do, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a, a military, law enforcement, you know, veterinarian, whatever you do in a daily job, I appreciate what you do. Because without you, heck, everything would be chaos. So I appreciate you tuning in on your busy schedule, coming in and uh, getting knowledge, because knowledge is a solution. Now I'm going to give you a quick review on everything real quick. Uh, number one, we talked about the different types and styles of nose bags. We talked about the different names of them. We talked about how to apply them. We talked about the pros and cons of the nose bags. And, uh, you know, I hope I gave you a set of ideas or tools that you can use to be able to use these, this type of equipment. Okay, in addition to the other stuff we talked about, we talked about how to uh, properly place a nose bag onto your livestock and also how to remove it safely, whether it's loosely in a herd putting on the nose bag and taking it off or tying up to a hitching post, tire rail, or a horse trailer, okay? So we showed you the good ways of doing that. So I hope you like this and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's a useful tool. Uh, I can't tell you what to do, but uh, it really is my job. My job is to make sure to show you what's out there and then you apply it if you like it. So on that note, take care. Uh, thank you so much. Adios now.
It's a difficult thing to explain I was taught from a child If things start to get wild Take a firm, gentle hold of the reins So live like a horseman Let your actions be honest and true Know that all that you do Whether you want it to Teaches someone something about you Like father and me.